Good morning, FlossTube. It's Pam, Stitching Between the Lines. Today is June 2nd. It's a Wednesday, 2021, FlossTube video 96. I feel like I'm out of the center of the screen, but it's always fun to see the quilt, right? Uh, that's Lori Holt's um, first Farm Girl, Farm Girl Vintage. And I had, I brought a piece over to show you last time because, I don't know, we talked about that. And I thought about this and then I didn't remember to show it but after I made farm girl vintage I liked uh, I like cherry cherries and I made this to go in my kitchen just a little you know toss it on the table counter wherever a little little whatever but I used her cherry block out of the quilt that pattern and then I made up this block and she has since come up with a pie block but this i made all the way back when farm girl vintage was new and i thought it was so cute this the rolling pin with the green handles like an antique kind of kitchen rolling pin i thought it came out super super cute such a nice little summer piece use the same backing that i used on my farm girl vintage i quilted it myself Here's a quilting tip. When I quilt, oh, I, sh I say that I quilted it myself like that's new. I have a long arm. I think we all know. I've talked about it. Anyway, when something is small like this, I don't necessarily put it on the long arm. I will do it myself on my domestic machine. And I don't use this, an especially fancy stitch. I pick one of the weavy stitches and I do them maybe every two inches apart. Hi, it could be closer together, just whatever you want. I knew this isn't wasn't ever going to get hard use. But that's my go-to stitch when I do it myself. Even when I make project bags, this is what I do. I put the little, there's a little marker on your machine, a little bar on my machine. My machine is a FOF, and I've had this on a number of machines. There's a little measuring bar that mounts on there, and it has a little curved foot that um, can follow along a line so you follow along let me dump all my feet out while I look for this so I can really show you excuse me I plan so many things and then something comes up and it really is right here so this you put this on and then this you measure how far from the needle the little curve is so I put a line on my fabric that's the diagonal or the straight or however you want and then two inches away or whatever distance you want and then your marker follows one of the lines while your needle stitches the other one and then after you've got the first line sewn I keep marking two inches I don't mark them all at once because it's the I use like a powdered line maker and it brushes away or it irons away uh, but once one is done you can kind of follow in the ditch of your previous line with this little curved doohickey that comes with your machine my machine anyway like I said I have a fof if you don't have something like that then there's ways to make to mark on the bottom of your machine the the distance or or just mark everything and follow the line so anyway there that's my pro tip uh, I also have, because it's here, a quilt, a table topper I made. I bought, a couple years ago, I bought um, from Fat Quarter Shop. Every now and then they'd have a little box that was seasonal. And if you weren't like spot on, Johnny on the spot and bought one, the minute they became available, you didn't get one. I only bought the Valentine's Day one and a patriotic one. So this is the patriotic the fabric bundle was in the box and I think the fabric line is a sweet water I think that's what it is and you have to add your background I almost never add just a flat plain background fabric so this is kind of a cream with little blue dots and then the center block was some pre-printed I don't know what I didn't want I made a little four patch, nine patch, a nine patch. 
it needs its binding sewn down that's what it's doing hanging out over here in my sewing space that will be a fun little addition for this time of year in the middle of the dining room table or kitchen table or whatever um what else am i doing other than cross stitch i i'm trying to force myself to finish things we all know i don't like to finish i like to drive my stuff to the framer um i had stitched this wasn't even on my whips or starts or anything i just all of a sudden around valentine's day i'm putting away all the feet the sewing machine feet i just dropped uh, it's always something right let's see how many of i can get put back so i don't lose them okay i did this around valentine's day i stitched all of them on a piece of i don't know it's the same thing i'm stitching oh something you're not gonna see i'll put it here i'll write it here okay so it's th i think it's 36 count though so while the little pillows came out super cute um which one did i show you first possibly this one i had done once upon a time and showed you my favorite beaded edge finish you sew a border around another piece of the fabric that exactly matches your stitched and then you go around with your needle and you just pick up the stitches and you decide how far apart you want your beads every third or fifth this in this case it's every fifth fifth loop around where you put your needle under the stitch on the back and the stitch on the front now the problem i'm having i i cut them with my pinking shears i put a few drops of um fray check on the corners because i'm will need to snip these down closer the problem i'm having is is because this is 36 count stitched with one over two there's some i am having a hard time it's such intense little delicate work getting my bead needle under each loop of of the you know border um, so it's kind of tedious but anyway stitched them all that one i think i showed you i have since finished this one where will we catch the light this one be mine I know my fingers have to go right in the middle otherwise I smush it too far it's stuffed with walnut shells I like that I like the in a pillow I like that effect and then I thought maybe because I'm having such a hard time I will do the biggest one and get that done so that I only have small ones left I have this little guy and I have this one oh there you know it's picking up threads off of its neighbor and it's been laying on my i don't even know what this is it's laying on my uh sewing machine counter here picking up everything and one more so i have three to do and they're the three roughly smaller not the smallest but they're smallish uh they should be relatively easy these are this is almost harder than the big ones because they're so tiny um this was the smallest I might do this one next since I know it's gonna be a chore going to be a chore so I'm trying to force myself into the FFOing mode I'm just pat piling these up here so I don't throw them on the floor the stitcher hood um, expressions Valentine I love cursive writing and stitching so there's that I worked on and then let's visit mania for a minute mania I have done mania for the last couple years and I have worked on either a whip or a new start to correspond with the day of the month up until the number of days have gone by that match the year so in 2021 it would have been up through the 21st only this year last year was the 20th and I had probably this a roughly equal number number of whips and new starts this year I had a lot of whips and I just didn't want starts and I also didn't really enjoy the one day per project. So I thought I will work on something for three days. I will pick 10 projects, that's 30 days, and then I'll start something on the last day of the month. Um, when it got to be 
when I had finished, I'm looking, referring, I'm just looking at my calendar. After I, after we last spoke, I was getting ready to start one, two, three, four, five, six. I had done six things, so 18 days. I was getting ready to start on my seventh, which was... Sue Hillis's Twas the Night. Love this one. Love it, love it. Still love it. But apparently after 18 days, I had had enough. I didn't realize it at the time. I just thought I was cursed there for a while. This is done on a piece of antique white Charles Craft Monaco. I started it three times back last year during Mania to get the color I liked. I like the way this looks kind of yellow and in the pattern it looks kind of yellow. I had a piece of yellow picked out that just didn't work. I don't know, I was trying different things. So up prior to Mania this year, I had everything done including I think, I think most of these two leaves and I think these three berries were done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11. Nope, I don't think the berries were done because I had 11 berries to work on and the leaves, which all went fine until I got to the berries. The berries are made up of a few, three different colors. I got out my first red and I did all 11 berries. They had two full stitches and two half stitches. So that's three stitches overall, roughly. I did them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I feel like I, sw I could swear a few of them were done, but I kept counting eleven. So then I looked at, I was getting the next color out, and I looked at the key, color key, and I thought I did those last ones in the wrong color. So I was so shocked, and I don't know, I went and I took all eleven out and I put them all back in. Then I discovered that the first color I did was correct. So after I got over that, I took out all 11 and I put all 11 back in. So I did basically 33 stitches in three hours. So I was starting to, you know, think, oh, that was really a challenge. And anyway, I worked for a while and I don't think I got as far as I thought I would. I did come over here and do a bit of this guy. Um, anyway, still love it. I thought I would get th these done and then another row of words, which would have been the stockings were hung. But after all that wasted time putting in uh, the wrong, the right red, the wrong red, the right red, I uh, put it away because it's three days was up. I don't hate it still. <laughs> And then I moved on to one of what I pulled out of my bin of what I consider patterns that need a week or less. So in my original mania plan, I was going to do, there was three of them that I was going to spend one day each on. Pulled out Little House Needleworks Lakeside Lodge, which is on a piece of 32 count picture this plus. And this is the piece where I discovered I don't like 32 count picture this plus with two over two. And I wanted this two over two. I want the boldness of these colors. I don't want it to look primitive or whatever, wispy, nothing, nothing like that. So the only thing that was done before sitting down was I think the land, you know, the, the land that it's sitting on, I think. And maybe I had done a pillar. I don't know. So I started working on its one day allotment on the body of the house here and this color is done in um cider mill brown by gentle arts i have two skeins in my uh, little baggie and one's darker than the other and i had started in the darker but then maybe i maybe next to my chair that little wad of thread got dropped on the floor or whatever and i just pulled out a thread and i started working and i'm like ooh, this is not working this is dramatically too light so i pulled it out and then i started to like fussy cut the thread 
to really get rid of some of the some of it was so white that it looked like it, there was no stitching there uh, I have stitch. No, this is not stitched. It's only just started the fence post. It looked like it was as bare as one of those fence rails. Back out it went. In the meantime, I think I'm going to have to order some more cider mill. And then I discovered my whole wad of thread. So I'm back on track doing the first level of the house. The fence is in the same color as the door, in theory. Here you can see contrast in not all light is there much contrast like sitting in my stitching chair where i have great light i did the fence and you couldn't even see it so i picked out the whole fence which didn't make me happy all along here uh left it blank and got the base of the house done and moved on to the roof and the roof color is supposed to be sable i think sable well, sable in my packet of colors doesn't look a whole lot different than the house. So I had done this whole porch roof and then I thought, mm -mm, it just looks ridiculous. I don't have any of the definition of things that I liked about this lakeside lodge. So I picked that out. Now this, by now I've moved on to three days of working on this thing. And I got a little bit of the upstairs done after three days. And I, with a lot of time to think about what's going wrong, two pieces that I've had terrible, terrible stitching issues with. And I came to the conclusion that I had just burned out of this whole three days and how much can you accomplish? And oh my gosh, I have to work to accomplish anything. It's only three days, which is not any better than the one day issue I was having during mania. Um, and in the meantime, I'm watching my floss tube friends and whatnot, and I just, somebody maybe mentioned working on a focus piece for a month and then had other things they did within that month. I believe that's what I'm going to do. I believe I'm going to pull out one of my large projects. I found the whole year from Last Mania to this one a little bit unsatisfying with the only, I was trying to work on things for a week at a time which let me touch a lot more things than maybe I would when I work for a couple months on one thing with only a few little added things. I decided I'm going to focus on a big piece for a month and pull a not so big or a closer to a finished piece or for example Farms of Hawkrun Hollow where I would like to really um, successfully get all the framing done on the rest of the blocks. Just pull out those two things and work on those. I know I will work on other things. I have my round robin pieces coming around. In some pieces I just really uh, suit a situation better. For example, if I move downstairs to that family room, um, I'll pick up an easier to move piece, not one of my really large ones. Um, something maybe I can stitch without uh, a magnifier, although I have one down there, but still. If families, kids are here, look at the back. The back is, I don't even want to talk about it. It's not really a disaster. I don't skip around, but I had to tie off a lot of ends because when I did the first fence, I came, I was doing the door and I came down and I went over and then I did a little bit of this and then back and then I went down a couple rows and then I went over and I did the rest of the fence posts and back fence posts and back. So when I picked these out and pulled them all back, I had more tails I had to hide and was not a good situation. So anyway, if like, for example, my kids are here and it's a weekend and it's rainy and we decide to watch a movie, I like to have something I can go down there with. So I know it will be more than just two pieces I work on. So that is what I'm going to do. One of the pieces I looked forward to the most in Stitch Mania, but I realized I wasn't going to be happy with only three days on it is pumpkins, which is a piece of the instructions is trying to fall out. Uh, Lucas, Lucas, that I got from um, mybobbin.com. Love this piece. And I knew three days was not going to make me happy. So I showed this in the beginning of Mania, showed you where I was. Um, I'm just very much looking forward to this. So this is going to be my June 2021 focus. And I'm up to where I'll be working into this um, green pumpkin. I am looking forward to that. I'm going to work on that today. 
I've had very little stitching time over the holiday weekend with company and we have you know, there's just stretches of time everybody everybody's life I think has times when there's just not a lot of stitching opportunity um, just a lot happening we can finally get outside and take care of some things to find it poured last week at the end of the week and finally on the weekend when it was getting nice I kept saying I can't be in the house I'd come in and the kids we're all reader we, readers we read a lot the kids would be in here reading away for them they're off of work they just want to read and enjoy a weekend and me I'm thinking I can read all day if I want and I just want to be outside even with my book so we spent a lot of time outside. Um, oh, and the, lest, I, lest I not forget the start I had. Holy cow, I'm ready to move on past stitching and go to um, a new start. I did start one thing, and only one thing, and it was something that I said I thought I would start during Mania, and I started a Rural Post Office at Christmas, which is a Busilla. Busilla? Busilla? I don't know. Um, this was a piece that was gifted to me by an, uh, another stitcher who felt, I think, when I said how much I really liked it and was look, would love to find it, um, passed it on to me. And if you can't guess which part of the picture this is, don't be dismayed. <laughs> I, I start in the center and I'm in the process of, <coughs> excuse me, working my way up to the corner and then I go down because I stitch in hand. I'm, I hold from this side, roll it up and hold it, and I want to hold actually stitched portions as little as possible. So get this done up here and drop down here, and then I'll do up here, and then I'll do down here. <coughs> Excuse me, I have dry. So what I have done is this little bit of red, the pillar, and the window. It is delightful to work on. It's a big pattern with a lot of pages four pages I think uh, that I've made a working copy of and I'm marking on which I don't really usually do <coughs> but when I copy it with the working copy then I put the picture together and make a co working copy that brings the seams together so I have a seam at the top a seam at the bottom and a seam out either side so I have a lot of pages to deal with uh, I believe the pattern is one big huge thing and that I definitely don't like to work with because it will end up creased and torn and holes at the crease so anyway that I went and I bobbinated there it, the flosses on floss cards and the floss cards I felt like the holes were really tiny so I was trying to cram back a lot of thread every time I use some so I bobbinated on these little bobbins and this is like bobbinating times 10 because you're only bobbinating this is you're bobbinating each pre-cut length of thread. Um, this is what I was using, so it's sort of, I'll wrap it around when the time comes. Um, I find that so, it was so much easier. This is actually the first time I think I've ever bobbinated a kit. I bobbinated one that I haven't started yet. This is the first time I've bobbinated a kit and I'm using it and it's so much easier. I know Dina of a half, Chris, half stitch, cross stitch, holy cow, sorry. Um, she does that and it, honest to goodness it just makes life so much easier so that almost took a day of sort of just messing around with that an evening certainly a solid evening um, so that was my mania uh, this lakeside lodge I worked on a bit last night which was June 1st I was doing the windows uh, the centers of the windows and some things like that. I think the roof was done. Sneezed. Um, I don't know why I don't have allergies and it's been a horrible allergy year and so if I was going to get allergies they would be here. Um, anyway something's in bloom. I don't know. So did I start saying about my kids in the weekend and oh I, <laughs> I just looked out the window. I know what the problem is. We have a field across the road from us. Uh, grass and wildflowers and whatever and it is being mowed there's a big tractor out there um, so while I might not be allergic to it when you start putting all that <clears throat> pollen and whatnot in the air it's going to make anybody sneeze 
Um, so this big field across the road from us that leads from our little private road up to the main road, um, they mow it once a year. The people who own it live a few doors down and they mow it once a year, uh, which helps, you know, with the wildlife that comes darting out by the road because there's no nothing between the edge of our road and the start of the tall grass. And But the wildflowers shoot up and it looks pretty. So anyway, that's happening right now. So my kids are readers. I'm I'm a reader. I'll sit anywhere and read. I don't take cross stitch out in public. It's that's where you take a book if you're in a waiting room or whatever. I don't have the mm, oh just spreading out all that crap all around me. Just not not even close to what I'll do. <laughs> I just need to you know you pull a book out, read a magazine, whatever. So somebody asked if I would um, just be more consistent about mentioning books and sometimes I read things that I don't want to talk about just because it's just I don't know I it's just frivolous maybe um or I just read it and I can't really formulate um much of a thought about it uh, <clears throat> so anyway I did read which is kind of funny see again not necessarily my style although I do like a good historical romance with some actual maybe where you learn a little bit about history like um henry the eighth the <clears throat> stories about the different queens and whatever that kind of stuff i've enjoyed well probably an awful lot of you have seen and heard or heard of and watched or decided you're never watching bridgerton on netflix which was an adaptation from the julia quinn novel the duke and i so on Netflix, it's Bridgerton. The book is The Duke and I. Um, I watched it, and it's very, um, it's a lot of what we would say, like eye candy, just just the where they live in the grounds, in the clothing, and so on. Uh, the movie, the series on Netflix has... A, has been enriched with storylines that are not in the book maybe they come out later i don't really know um, so it's a very easy read if you've seen the tv show you already know how it's going to come out i just saw it at i don't know walmart or something and i picked it up and it was i figured it would be a good outdoor read because we do sit out on the dock a lot and read and which it was it was an outside read it's a nice sweet story but not a, not as typically graphic as um, often are found in romance novels. Um, so, I don't know. Some people find that offensive or that's not what they want to read. The story was, like I said, we already knew the outcome and uh, it was just fun. My understanding is th the Julia Quinn Bridgerton series of books, the first one being The Duke and I, it's eight books and each book follows one of the Bridgerton children through their romance into marriage so this was the first one this was Daphne uh, one of the Bridgerton children so I read that I'm not chasing down the subsequent books I almost in this case would rather see the TV show first um, the next when Netflix releases the next one uh, I think only just because, you know, you get attached to the characters and the storyline and that kind of thing. So that, I read that, and then I am reading. I have started The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce, and it says it was a national bestseller, which I knew I had heard of it. I don't know that I ever knew what it was about or anything about it, but I went... For the first time since um, the whole, since we moved here and since the whole uh, pandemic shut everything down, I went to the local thrift store that has, it's in what was at one time, I'm guessing a house. It maybe was a sort of, I think it was a house and it's right off of the main street in our little city and it's probably four stories tall it sits right smack up against the sidewalk um so it's kind of a hist i don't know anything about the history of the building but it was interesting anyway on the second floor is what would be all the bedrooms and um 
one of the rooms is full of books. So I don't remember what they cost. I, let's just say 50 cents a piece or 25 cents a piece. So when I start going through at that price, I'll take a chance on a book without really reading what it's about. So I picked up this one. I started it yesterday and yesterday I actually was gone all day. <laughs> But there were a couple times when I needed to wait a little while, like I had an eye doctor's appointment and I had my book and I really, really enjoy this. I It's hard to even say Harold Fry. It's a the kind of book that starts out on a very, very, very basic premise. Harold Fry got a letter in the mail from a woman he used to work with saying that she was in a hospice care and dying of cancer he's been retired five years maybe and he is so affected by this letter he immediately writes her back he gives a little hint that his life is boring and mundane and that retirement is just boring and mundane and that he doesn't aspire to anything he doesn't do anything his wife spends her time cleaning the house he doesn't do anything they don't go anywhere they have no base basically no real life there's the hint that there's an unhappy situation with one child that he doesn't have any contact with. I'm unclear as to whether the mother does or not. So he writes her back a very brief letter, which he's at a loss for words for. And so he writes her a few sentences and he's ready to mail it. This is all in the first chapter. So it's like I said, it's a very basic premise. He gets a letter. He writes a response. He goes, heads off to take it to the mailbox and he can't bring himself to put it in the mailbox. He thinks that he didn't get to sort of mull over the situation long enough that maybe he'll walk to the next mailbox, which he does. And then he thinks maybe I'll take it to the main post office because then she'll get it tomorrow. But he feels like his, his letter is very lacking. So he, for whatever convoluted reason, you have no idea what's going on. He decides he's going to walk, get to her, which maybe is 500 miles away. He lives at the very lower end of England and she lives way at the top. I don't know, there's a map. They, somebody says it's 500 miles. He says they don't know anything about anything. So I don't really know. Give a little map. And he starts out way down here, and she's all the way up here. Um, it's that kind of story that's like an onion, where every chapter like peels another layer away, and you start to get a more and more of a picture of his relationship with his wife, who, when she finds out he's walking anywhere, she said, you never walk anywhere but from the house to the car. And she has a thought in her brain. I don't think she speaks this out loud, but she said he can't even cut a slice of bread without making a mess, which kind of cracked me up. Gives you a hint of what kind of relationship they might have. So I am very much enjoying this book. It was the kind of book where I, I sit down to read more often than I would normally because it's just there's some intriguing about how very simple the folks are in this book but there's so much story in there that is just sort of seeping out as you read it so anyway that's what i'm reading this is the one i'd recommend i'd only recommend bridgerton the duke and i if you really love that kind of book um or saw the series and are curious about the story um you know you could read it there so there we go that's what's happening around the house here i to, let's see what are the plans june uh, i don't think anything stitching mm, there's some appointments in my calendar i guess it's sort of ho-hum humdrum normal as we approach july where i'm not going to get much stitching time at all so i'm going to work on those pumpkins like crazy and um, I hope everybody has is having a good spring here in the United States. It seems to be extreme weather one way or another. Here it's just a bit colder than we'd like, and it, there's but there's been plenty of rain. Flowers are looking beautiful. Uh, we're just doing the things, doing the things. Hope everybody's well and can do the things too. Bye.